how many pigs should I start with? And like I always told you, or those I referred to in the past, I always told you that uh, it doesn't matter the number of pigs you want to start with. But for, to me, I always tell you that uh, no matter how, how many pigs you have to you want to start, just know that the pigs you have or you want to start with, you can manage them. And that is why I always take you through that in a, in a day, you're supposed to feed this kg or feed to this, uh, that, this kind of animals you want to raise. If they are growers, you, starting, you are starting with, you know how much they are consuming in a day, and you know how much it will cost you to get them to the finishing stage. And one thing also about feeding is that with the, if it's piglet, the cost of feed for piglet costs more than that of growers. And that one also costs more than for the, 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 the finishes because protein is the actual difference, that actual thing that is making a lot of difference here. Piglets consume more protein, so the protein cost is also high. So you buy high protein at a high, high cost. And at the finishing stage, you reduce the protein and come for carbohydrates, which is usually the, the corn or the maize. That one is also a bit cheaper than the protein, and it's even in larger quantity. Comparing the, the, the size is much more than the, the protein. Okay, imagine going to buy soya bean for the 50 kg of soya bean for close to 600 Ghana cities, and then buying 150 kg of maize for about 700 Ghana cities. So, you see, a whole lot of difference in that sense. And then, if you want to also start, like if you want, you are, you are still contemplating about the number of rooms to start with. I would say the number of rooms does not also just matter, but what matters is you should always have an empty room. That is what I call the emergency center. If anything happens or anything is suspected in any of your pigs, quickly you take that particular guy, drop him in the room to be alone. Okay, that is why you quarantine those animals. So no matter the number of rooms you have, always have a room specifically designed and reserved for emergency purposes. Assuming you, you want to change some breed, so you went into another farm to get new pigs to store in your farm or to mix with what you already have. When you get those pigs to your farm, you don't just go and mix them with your pigs. No, if they have some kind of infections, they are bringing it to your farm. And you know, pigs are very vulnerable. The little thing that enters, them, especially viral infections, it takes them off. They die like that. So if you bring new arrivals, what you need to do is to take them straight to the quarantine area or the empty room you have reserved. Observe them for like a week, at least a week, it should be okay. Observe them there. And once they are there, you know, you will definitely have to go there, supply them with the feed as well as water, and even do some kind of cleaning in that room. So with that, what I also tell you is that if you go to work on a farm, always work in all the healthy rooms, with the, all the healthy pigs in the rooms. And then you go to work in the quarantine area last. After you have worked there, you just go and disinfect yourself or remove your clothing, then you go off the farm. But if you go to work first in the quarantine area, assuming these animals have some kind of infections which have not been uh, noticed or the symptoms have not shown yet, after you have worked there, you go back to work in the healthy ones. You see that you are transmitting these uh, infections there, and that is cross contamination. You are just doing like that. So it's always good for your own safety to work on the quarantine rooms last, and after that you leave the farm or you disinfect yourself. Okay, if you have the budget to, you can have separate clothing and separate tools and equipment for that quarantine area alone so that you don't bring those things back and forth. You understand? So with the number of pigs you want to start with, that one depends on what you can feed adequately and your rooms. For the rooms to always have a, a quarantine area. And the quarantine area should not be too close. Maybe this is a room for the healthy ones. The next one is the quarantine. No, it shouldn't work that way. They should be a bit distance from each other. So if maybe you have a room here for uh, healthy ones, there should be about three-fourths a uh, room interval so that you can keep them away from the, the other healthy ones because most of these infections can also be transmitted by the air. So if they are close, it's definitely going to be blown into the healthy ones. And you know, to some of them, usually they, they like to uh, get up and stand on the walls. So you see them, they raise their, their limbs, put it on the wall, and in doing that, you see the saliva coming out of their, their mouth. So if it gets spilled into the other rooms and this place goes go there to have contact with the saliva or the fluid, definitely you have just picked the infection like that. So it's always good you distance your, your quarantine area. If possible, just take it about uh, 100 meters away from the main farm and then you keep them there safe to be on their own. So for the number of pigs and the rooms, you are done with it. And for the feeding, the feeding is it's not all the formula cannot work for other pigs because there are some pigs, depending on how you want to even buy them, the kind of treatment or how they started with them. You need to continue with that and then try to adjust your feeding until they come to accept yours. 
but if you go there and you switch it automatically to what you have on your farm they might not eat it and if they eat also there's a way they're going to be some kind of digestion issues and that is where they start running diarrhea if they eat but most of the time they don't even eat it they will just be looking at the feed the feed will be left there like that they're not going there and flies will just be on top of it okay so if you want to switch to what you already have on your farm it should be a gradual process you start first, if maybe you, what you have on your farm, and then what you, part of what you want to, part of the feed from where you want to buy these animals from. If today you are mixing, where they are, the feed they are used to already, maybe you make that one 90% of the total, and then you have 10%. The next day, maybe 85%, and then you have 15%, and then 70%, 30%, 40, 60, yeah, until you're able to replace it completely with what you have on your farm. It's a gradual process, and it will take time. But trying to do it all at once, you're going to collapse your animal or you're going to have issues that will arise later. So this is what you need to know when you're starting this business. And know that pig farming, like I said, you can't just know everything from start. Most of the things will catch you by surprise. And you have to click your mind and then bring the solution out and then get it solved on your own. So for those who want to stay, always watch videos, listen before they start. You will never start because most of the things are going to be practical. Like I said, diseases. People encounter a whole lot of strange diseases on their farm. Like you see some hernia, some balls around their necks and the skins of the animals. But I must tell you, four years now, four years now, as at the time of making this video, I've never encountered any strange disease on my farm. Okay, no strange disease. The only thing is I go by the by giving the iron at the right time, deworming them, giving the antibiotics, and then multivitamins. That's all. These four are the basic things I have on my farm. I don't really spend that much in terms of medication and I don't also worry myself too much. But I make sure the pen is always clean because we clean twice a day. I use a cemented floor, so we clean twice a day. And I make sure the water, where they drink from, to, we will, anytime I want to supply the water, I wash it in the morning, fill it. Even in time I remove it and f wash it, fill it again. So it's always clean. And to couple with that also, there's, there's only one person who's working on the farm. If I am not there myself, I have an attendant who is always taking care of the animals on my behalf. That is it. So only two people. And I make sure I don't entertain uh, visitors that much to the farm. So you need to also put in some measures to safeguard your investment. Remember, if your animals die, people will still love to consume them, the dead ones. They would like to consume them, irrespective of the kind of uh, bacteria or the kind of virus or pathogen that entered them. People will still love to eat them. Meanwhile, you, the farm owner, you are crying about the losses you incurred. So it's always up to you the farmer you know how much your farm is worth protect it don't worry about these strange diseases if you go by the uh, cleanliness and then the hygiene on the farm as well as going by the basic uh, vaccinations and some treatment you should be perfectly fine you can farm your way throughout your entire life and you're not going to encounter any difficulty at all the only thing is marketing will catch you so you have to look at that angle also as well